Oh, I feel right at home. This is Jackson Heights, Queens? Wait, I didn't recall taking a plane. No, we're actually still in England. This is Manchester, but we're far away from the city center. We've gone to a area called Curry Mile, which is the little India slash Pakistan of the city of Manchester. And it makes me feel right at home because I grew up in the little India of Queens, New York, which is Jackson Heights, Queens, uh, along 73rd Street. So we're gonna walk around Curry Mile and explore this beautiful city of Manchester, which is known as the fastest growing city in all of the United Kingdom. Billions and billions of dollars are being funneled into the city. I'm not sure exactly with this neighborhood in particular, but we're gonna see that development a little bit later on. I'm Ariel, this is Urbanist. Let me know where you're watching from. Welcome to the Curry Mile. It starts right around here and we're gonna walk along it. If you wanna see some proper Indian food, I went to one of the best places right before this broadcast. So after this video, you can check it out called Chit and Chat. There's plenty of other restaurants, but I wanted to show you a more kind of casual bite, something a little bit quicker to eat, especially if you're coming here during the daytime and want to have a nice lunch. Chit and chat, check it out. Amazing, amazing food. I was really impressed by it. But this is really bringing me back home. Christine says, are we live? Yes, we're doing it live. This is serviced by a lot of easy to use buses. I've realized that the city of Manchester actually has various bus systems, which um, is a bit tricky actually, but you can take at least a few of the bus systems over here. There's a whole lot of lines. Ron says it looks very Brooklyn. To me, yes, Ron. Uh, to me specifically, even more specific, it looks like Queens. It looks like Jackson Heights. Not just because of the ethnic uh, makeup, but also because of the architecture. So right down there, we're seeing that um, Manchester is quickly becoming the tallest city after London in the United Kingdom. The second city with the most amount of skyscrapers is this one, and we're seeing them there in the Hey, Karen says, espero que esta bien. ¿Cómo se llama el barrio? Bienvenidos, Karen. Se llama Curry Mile, la milla de Cori. Uh, yo no sé cómo se dice Curry en, en español. Me imagino que es la misma cosa. Uh, pero esta es una, una milla que está mucho de restaurantes indios y también pakistanos. Uh, y tú a ver también turco, como aquí mismo. So, there's a lot of Indian Pakistani restaurants here in Curry Mile, and also some Turkish, as we see here. So you'll find a variety of foods. So even though sometimes you might not see the Pakistani influence so clearly as we spoke with a gentleman at the food fair who is, um, who has a lot of Pakistani friends. He said that a lot of the Indian food restaurants actually run by Pakistanis. I found that very fascinating. You can refer to the other video I did in Manchester. Hey, how's it going? Uh, you could, I'm doing live, yeah, yeah. Uh, doing on YouTube. YouTube can I do? Yeah, yeah, you can do. You can check it out. A few hundred people to the end. Yeah. What do you recommend in Curry Mile? What's the best uh, food? Uh, this one, Jaffa, the best one. Jaffa. Oh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Cool. Yes, it's, uh, uh, nice. What is your name on Facebook? Who Urbanist on? exploring cities. Urbanist. 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 You got it right. Yeah. yeah. Jaffa. I mean, is it, Jaffa is the best one. Oh, it's wonderful. Like, awesome. Green chili, very nice. Green chili as well, okay. Yeah, so Perfect. Okra with rice is the best one here now. Oh, because cool. Because you cannot find it till about around five-ish. Yeah. So. Oh, interesting. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank Have you. a good day. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, so, Jaffa. Rice is rare. Seems more like a casual place, that's awesome. Let's take a small little detour. I really like the look of this park. <laughs> I 
<laughs> I think the guys are yelling at me. <laughs> um, you're a bit red after the curry, says Kate. Indeed I am. Indeed I am. It was heavy on the, on the tanginess. Also, I'm getting a nice Manchester tan today because of the, of the sun. Debbie, the name is Curry Mile, but um, has a different name, Rusham, I think is the name um, for any uh, Mancunian Stunian. Do let me know how to pronounce the name of the actual neighborhood. Curry Mile is just the name of the thoroughfare. Rosemary says, don't put your phone down. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. <laughs> it's okay. These neighborhoods, um, you know why I've noticed Rosemary? Um, again, I'm generalizing for the sake of conversation, but a lot of Indian neighborhoods I've been to always feel generally safe, in my opinion, from my experience too. Going to London, going to New York, going to Boston, other cities. All right. Ms. Lob says we have a little India. Where, Ms. Lob? Do remind me where you're tuning in from. I do my best to remember where people are watching from, but sometimes I will need a few times to. We have a lot of buses here. Buses. Toronto. Yeah, Toronto also has a little. I can imagine it's just as vibrant. Lebanese food, which is of course not Indian, it's Middle Eastern, but I tried amazing Lebanese food in uh, Ontario, Ontario and Quebec City. <laughs> Look at this, New York crispy fried chicken. <laughs> oh, I love that. Oh, that's funny. New York crispy fried chicken. That's a funny name. Hey, Sally, loving the streams from South Africa. I'm so glad you're tuning in. Susu says, I just saw your Indian food review. It looked delicious. Now I have the energy for my walk. Yeah, you know, I was contemplating of doing a food stop with... Um, for the restaurants where I have to like really sit down and take my time. I decided to go to the very beginning of Curry Mile so I can show you fast food and then and then do just walking. Susie says can't escape New York. Nope. For some reason fried chicken is popular here. I'm not sure why. Ooh, we got jewelry. We can they buy gold in any condition. Who wants a ring? Let me know. Who wants a gold ring? Gold rings are being given out today. April, thank you so much. Rush Home, thank you so much. It's Rush Home, yes. Rush Home is the name of the neighborhood. Wendy, it says ring, please. Christine's at 500 stars. Thank you so much. Stars are worth double. Thank you so much. I just found out every star's party, which has been activated a few times, thanks to K rallying people. Star's party happens when a few people leave stars in immediate succession. I end up getting a $50 bonus from them at every star's party, which is very good uh, because I mentioned I do this for work and um, the more budget I have, the better things I can show you, the cooler things I can show you. So thank you everyone for activating stars parties and sending stars and then on YouTube super chats. Honestly, you will get looks because you're in. Uh... Rosemary says you'll get looks because you're in different territory. Um, I don't know. I find I find I find neighborhoods like this friendly. Everyone don't. Uh... 
don't be deterred coming to neighborhoods like this, like a little India. Um, there's many little, uh, there's many Caribbean also ethnic neighborhoods. These cultures tend to be pretty friendly. Uh, in a different way, of course, from the friendliness you might encounter with other countries. But yeah, they tend to be nice. I, I do recommend coming to the Indian neighborhoods or the Chinese neighborhoods or the uh, Caribbean neighborhoods of uh, the UK. Paul says, get off the cycle path. Paul, it's a very small sidewalk. I'm just letting people pass. Patience, patience people. Bob said 500 stars. Thank you so much, Bob. Finally, a nice sunny day, says Ellie. Yeah. <laughs> we got nice, the nice Manchester sun. Great place to get um, a nice tan. Panel says, I went there one day during the holiday. It really felt like being on a holiday. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a nice little escape if you're yeah, local and live in a different part. Ron says, I think people are staring because I look like a Bollywood star. <laughs> it's a rare day as it always rains, says Ollie. Really? I thought Manchester was such a sunny place. Oh, sunshine and rainbows all the time. Stop a look at the sorry, says Miss Lob. All right, Miss Lob. We'll do. To show you sorry. Is this far from central Manchester? Only a 10 minute bus ride away. Very quick. Walking is going to be a little bit longer. 40 minutes, 30 or 40 minutes. Well, Joanne says, have you got all your layers on? <laughs> Are people watching a different broadcast? <laughs> I'm getting a lot of messages. Hope you got your layers on. Uh, I hope you're being safe. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's okay. <laughs> um, the only thing you have to fear in this neighborhood is uh, spicy food. <laughs> That's the only thing you have to fear. And uh, no, it's not that, it's not that cold. It's not that cold. There we go. Hey. Um, authentic Asian cuisine, some shawarma. Tom, I ate some Indian lunch before this broadcast. You can check it out afterwards. Sharon says, the football derby is later today. It'll be madness. Oh, I heard. Looks like Middle Village Queens, says Marianne. It really does. Welcome. I'm Ariel. This is Urbanus. This is the place where we explore cities. Live streams for a portion. the content I do. Sometimes it's very into the history, sometimes it's about, but it's about spontaneously exploring and going with the flow, 
showing you real life exploration in real time. Oh my god, a gas station. I haven't seen a gas station in my entire trip thus far here. People don't know, I have not hired a car, as they would say here, or rent a car, as they would say in the U.S. Uh, I've been using all trains. Those are the gas prices. 157 pounds, ladies and gentlemen. 157 pounds. Pretty cheap. Not that bad, right? Lots of shawarma here, oh. Seems like a significant Turkish population. We got fried chicken as well. Ohio fried chicken. So first we had fried chicken, now we have Ohio fried chicken. We're getting all the, all the US states here. Soon we're gonna have some Jersey fried chicken as well. New Jersey fried chicken. We can go to Patty Power, make some gambling. Who wants to go and have a nice gamble? Oh my god, look at that shawarma, it's huge. <laughs> Kay says that price is per liter. Yeah, very cheap, 157 pounds for a liter. Alex says it's uh, Oasis's uh, home grounds. Yes, indeed. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, we have a Don Tacos. We have tacos here. That's cool. Ms. Lop says, mmm, shawarma. Peter says, it's really, Elisa? Are you sure? It's not 157 pounds? We got Pitmaster, which is barbecue smokehouse. So if you want some, wow, a lot of American inspired things over here. I didn't think I would find American things in a little India. And here we have Heavenly Desserts. <laughs> I, love, I love the title, Heavenly Desserts. And bubble tea. Hype says, may you find a souvenir. Yeah, a lot of cool stuff here. Let's check out a uh, random residential street here in Rashom. Ms. Lob says bubble tea is Chinese, right? Chinese? Ah, yes. Uh, great question, Ms. Lob. Bubble tea was developed in Taiwan. It was invented there. The Chinese have adopted it very quickly. Uh, it's extremely popular all around East Asia. So bubble tea is found in Philippines, Taiwan, China, Korea, and a lot of the bubble tea places that you'll see, at least here in the UK, most likely are run by uh, specifically Chinese or Hong Kongese. I'm just assuming, of course, I don't know 100% for sure. In uh, New York, a lot of bubble tea places are also run by Koreans. Wendy says, great to see you. Oh, thank you so much, Wendy. Typical terrace housing. Yep, this is a typical house in Manchester.
Ron says, milk tea is becoming too popular here. Yeah, I mean, milk tea is very popular in the Philippines. Thank you for letting us know. Janet says, Thailand as well, yeah. Uh oh. We have a break in. Basically saying nothing to see here. Keep moving all along. These guys mean trouble. We gotta watch out. We gotta continue on, right? Don't look at them directly in the eye. Catherine, that is not Bob. No, no, or Bobettes. Those guys are some ruffians. Oh, they already broke into one car. Hey, Carmen, nice to see you here. Hello, Irene, welcome. Here we got a chain called Pepe's. Piri Piri Chicken. We can get access to the year here. <laughs> and Ben and Jerry's is sold here. Elisa says it's a mob of bobs. <laughs> That was nice. Cool neighborhood, I like it. Huge park over here. And soon we're gonna get to... Ron says, is it a Mexican Popeyes? No, I think Piri Piri, I think was referring to Portuguese. Portuguese spices. Uh, anyone let me know for sure. Wendy says, catch that bus. We will uh, walk. So much to see, says Ben. Oh, yes. Sharon says, uh, service is fine now. Christopher says, looks like Manchester. Indeed it is. Good old Manchester. Hanging out with the Manx. Oh, look what we found. The iconic Canadian breakfast stop a good old Tim Hortons 249 for uh, <laughs> a sausage hash brown egg wrap and a coffee huh ah, good deal plum says not that many people have cell phones on their hands like in America yeah here you see a little bit more cell phones than you would say even even when you even go to Italy or Greece, even less cell phones. But yeah, this has less cell phones in America. Beautiful architecture here. 
Now we're starting to see that university architecture. Rosemary is saying I can't watch anymore. Stay safe. Okay. Rosemary, thank you so much for tuning in. Hey, Chris, nice to see you here. Chris Bowman, thank you so much for tuning in on Twitch. Mark says, do you stay in the B&Bs or uh, on your travels? Uh, if you're talking about the classic bed and breakfast, like the one that England is known for and the UK, uh, no, I have not stayed in the traditional bed and breakfast. Those traditional bed and breakfasts usually are for smaller towns. So, if you're traveling in the countryside, that's where it's probably better to stay in a traditional bed and breakfast where they make your breakfast. Sometimes they even make more dinner as well. And um, it, it's basically a home with just a lot of rooms. Wow, we're getting so many views on Facebook. Thank you everyone so much for all the views on Facebook and all the views on YouTube as well. I'm surprised Facebook I used to not get that many people tuning in uh, for quite a while, but now we have 180 people tuning in at the same time. So welcome all Facebookers. Share this video with any relevant Facebook groups. Uh, I got to bundle up a little bit. Uh, it's feeling a bit cold. Uh, a bug flew right into my face. Okay. Uh, hey, Harry, I'm near your house. That's so cool, Harry. Are you going to invite us over for tea, Harry? So bear with me as I um, get set up here, put on the scarf. Hey, como te pareciendo la gente de Londres? Nomades, es una buena pregunta. Nomades says, uh, how do the people in London appear to me? So, no estoy en Londres ahora mismo, estoy en Manchester. Um, la gente de Londres son muy bien, son bien son amables. Pero se puede más amable afuera de Londres. So the people in London are very nice, uh, but it gets nicer, it gets more warmer, it gets a little bit more friendlier in terms of the people outside of London. Especially the more north you go, I noticed it's a bit more warmer, a bit more casual uh, atmosphere, which is nice. And uh, Mancunians, yes, the Mancunians are very, very nice people. And then the smaller towns, it gets even more warmer, even than that. Gustavo says, una español donada. I don't know how to speak uh, Portuguese, but hoy tuto bien. It's the only thing I really know in Portuguese. And uh, Janice says, uh, Facebook. Thank you. All right, I'll put on some gloves. And Scousers are better, says Angela. <laughs> it's funny, Liverpool and Manchester have quite a rivalry. Quite a rivalry. And Sarah, nice to see you here. Welcome. Welcome, everyone. Some people in London may have to be there to study or conduct business. Yeah, I mean, that's the nature of a big city. Uh, the bigger the city, the more... Not so warm it's going to be. Warmth is different from friendliness. So a lot of places around the but a lot of places are. Uh, a lot of places I visit in, in Western Europe are friendly. A lot of places I visited in, in America are friendly. Uh, warmth is a bit more than friendliness, uh, the way at least I define it. Um, and the bigger the city, the less warm it's going to be. And someone says about how fast it's growing. This is indeed the fastest growing city in the UK. It is estimated that it will double in population in the next few years. Uh, billions and billions of dollars are being poured into Manchester. 
and a lot of the skyscrapers being built, it's quickly, it's already becoming the second tallest city in the UK. Let's continue walking around. Robert says, looking good, thank you so much for Robert. Robert, uh, Adam says, do you have backup plan if things are not going your way? Yeah. There, there's not too much of a backup plan. Uh, when it comes to visiting a city like this, and let's cross the street because the architecture is looking mighty nice right over here, but let me uh, wait until the buses. So when it comes to things going wrong, A, I always get travel insurance, which is always a nice to have. I recommend World Nomads. I like their service. It's very easy to get. B, I'm generally traveling to places where if anything happens, there's a lot of alternatives. I am in the United Kingdom. If anything happens, I can always find a new Airbnb, new hotel easily. Um, there is a variety of price options here. Last time I visited the UK, I had an issue with my credit cards, uh, a financial issue, and I barely had any money. And luckily, I was able to find very inexpensive food and survive for a few weeks. Also, there's great um, groceries here are very inexpensive. Beyond that, there's a lot of transportation options. So you might you, you probably won't get stuck anywhere. It's easy to take a train, easy to take a bus. Uh, if you want to, you can hire a car in most major cities, if not all. And then beyond that, if you're in a major city, Manchester, London, Birmingham, uh, Liverpool, and you're stuck in the neighborhood and it's too late, you can't take buses, there's always Uber. So as long as you have cell phone reception. So, there's not much need for too many backup plans because a country like the UK is very safe. Oh, it says Suzanne Lacey. What kind of city? It's the Whitworth. Jim says, is it more likely that many neighborhoods have uniquely warm vibe even in larger cities. Yeah, I think if you want to find a warmer crowd in the large city, go to more of the outer neighborhoods. That's usually the case. In America, it's a fine balance. I think if you go to the suburbs, it isn't that warm. Um, but that, that's in America. I'm not sure about here. But here, if you go to more of the working class neighborhoods, more of the outer neighborhoods, it seems to be a little bit warmer. So let me uh, pop in. I'm not sure if uh, there'll be cell phone reception. Hi. Is it open to to? Thank you so much. Lorraine, thank you so much for the... Steph is so cute, I can walk my dog here. Yeah, it's so cool. This is one of the things I love most about the UK. So... ...and mission. Almost every museum is free. Check. No admission. Oh, so says what's the exhibition about I don't know we'll find out <laughs> April it's called the Whitworth Gallery And 
This is uh, Oitworth, Sir Joseph Oitworth. Emojis are allowed. Bam. Now that's the only. Are allowed, yes. So far, so far. That was very nice. That was the Whitworth Gallery. It was very nice. No service as I went further into the museum, unfortunately. It was uh, seemed to just be one exhibition. There might have been another floor. Ron says, uh, I did not hear what you said inside. I said, uh, emojis are indeed allowed. Um, just don't spam the same type of emoji over and over again. Spamming overall is not allowed, uh, emoji or not. But otherwise, you can use emojis all that you want. As I mentioned, I always say pe people leave a round of hearts. So yes, uh, all moderators, emojis are indeed allowed. Sharon says the 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 sun came out for me. Oh, that's awesome! Awesome. Wendy says India made me thirsty. It did, yeah, quite a lot. <laughs> Very thirsty.
Debbie says, I hope you're having a nice time. I really am. Now look at this. This railing is meant to limit bicycles. Oh, Janice, may your sister feel better. Alex is enjoying the stroll very much. I'm so glad you are. It's a beautiful little area. I think this is called Xavier College area. Debbie, am I in Manchester? Yes, indeed. Maisie says, congrats on the 500,000 followers on TikTok. Thank you so much. Yes. Uh, so I did reach 500,000 followers on TikTok. Debbie, there'll be one more weekend of videos. Stay tuned. And I'm adding uh, Wednesday to, to the schedule. So Wednesday through Sunday, 3 p.m. Stay tuned. One more weekend of videos in the UK. And Debbie, you recognize it, yes. This is Manchester. And yeah, this is the uni of Manchester. Thank you so much, Judith. And everyone, round of hearts for the moderators who are keeping the good vibes in the comments. Round of hearts, we have Ron S. Field, Susan K. on Facebook and on YouTube as well. Uh, Susan is on Twitch too. Um, Sarah, we have plenty of them too many in today, a round of hearts. Hey Hans, nice to see you here. Janice, thank you so much for tuning in. April says then off to France. <laughs> stay tuned, stay tuned. Plenty of things to show. As I mentioned, thank you everyone for being contributors. Um, that ensures the show will go on. There'll be plenty of stuff to see. Mel, sa Mel says, what sense do I smell? That's a good question. Um, it smells pretty neutral here. Uh, I just feel, I just smell the greenery mostly. Not too much in Curry, in Curry Mile. I think Curry Mile has pretty much come to an end. Uh, that had a lot more different kind of scents to it. And ooh, I had uh, Indian food. It's making me so thirsty. So, pardon all the water chugging. Let me know if you ever felt the same after a meal. There's some meals, and I wonder what it is. I think it's the carbohydrates, maybe, and just make one make me really thirsty sometimes. Uh, of course, coffee as well, but coffee is more general. Let me know if that happens to you with uh, food. Mm. Susie says it happens to you with Chinese food. Eibel says it happens with uh, salty food. Jenna says allergies from okay. So yeah, I couldn't eat the oatmeal, but um, I'm okay. Jose, saludos de Argentina, bienvenidos. Bienvenidos, voy a preguntar 
en la ciudad de Manchester. Yo no sé si hay una traducción para... Es Inglaterra. Y es una ciudad más grande de Inglaterra. Bien bonito. Y vale la pena visitar. Uh, this is beautiful Manchester. I really love it. And highly recommend you visiting it. It's quite a beautiful place. Every new live video is a surprise. So stay tuned. Wednesday, you'll see where I am. So I was, uh, I was uh, hanging out with a friend here in Manchester, whom I met in Athens originally. And she was telling me that uh, Manchester, she's a local, she was telling me Manchester has uh, the highest pollution of the entire UK. I was shocked to hear that. It seems very clear to me, but let me know if anyone can clarify. Debbie says, enjoy yourself. What language were you speaking just there? Yes, so I, the two languages I speak on this broadcast is Spanish and English. It's an English show, but I, so I speak Spanish for the people who tune in sometimes from Latin America and Spain. I think some Filipinos also understand when I speak Spanish. Have you been to the Northern Quarter, as Anne? Yeah. The video I did uh, of Manchester. <laughs> no problem. I think, uh, so... April says, if you had spicy, they tend to be salty as well. That's why you're wanting water. April says, uh, drink as much as to a Sainz Sainsbury. Who wants to join me on an adventure through a classic British place that every British person visits at least once in their life? A place that at night it becomes the most popping location. Check out my Instagram stories for that. I'll post the photo later. Who wants to go to Sainsbury's? <laughs> the suburb market. I'm not sure if they'll allow me to film there. So if I'm kicked out, I'm kicked out. But uh, I gotta buy some water. So let's see. Bear with me.
Oh, everyone, now we show you Sainsbury's, but bad cell phone reception, and oh no, I think there's a gentleman who collapsed. I hope it's okay. That's in here. Yeah, I think a guy just had an overdose. Luckily, they they already called the ambulance, but I'm sad. Um, but I wish I could show you Sainsbury's as well. However, um, no cell phone reception there. So that that's a there's the bigger one, and that one is called local, which is just a smaller one. That's like in the in the cities, and there's very good prices. So if you're looking for the cheapest prices, uh, my experience has been Sainsbury's and Tesco's. If you're looking for a very budget item, different priced items, so it doesn't always have to be um, very expensive things, like it might be in the Whole Foods in, the, in New York. There is a show happening here. Cool, live music and you can hear it. Judith says you're glowing. Oh, thank you so much, Judith. I got the, the Manchester glow, the Mancunian glow. It happens. When one takes a nice suntan here in Manchester. Manchester. Beautiful church. Look at that. Wow. Churches here are really impressive. Teresa says, are you going to the show? You know, that would be really tempting, but as the case with most indoor venues in the UK, there's very poor cell phone reception in most places. Also, probably copyright issues. I'm not sure how big the band is. Yesterday I got, I did Sheffield, which was an awesome broadcast. And um, after we stepped out that, that was singing opera, there was a busker singing a cover song. And only within a few seconds, YouTube recognized that as the copyright of that, the song that the label belongs to, even though it was a cover even though it was a few seconds, even though I did not even feature the music, I didn't even like linger there. I was speaking the entire way through, but I still detect detected it. And that video, if I put ads on it, they're taking all the money. I don't get the money from, from, uh, from my own video. From three hours, only 20 seconds of background with my voiceover. Uh, indeed. Very frustrating. Uh, and that's why I don't feature too much popular music. Uh, not all the time, unless if it's uh, maybe something more specific about music, I might, but not in a... That's why I give a shout out to all the super urbanists out there. Super urbanists, people who love these broadcasts and contribute on a monthly basis. The ones who choose to, you don't need to, of course. That's um, but I love having super urbanists out there be the sponsors, people who contribute on a monthly basis. So super urbanists, thank you so much. Patreon.com slash urbanists if you want to become one. And also, you can become a mega urbanist and get a special postcard. We got a new mega urbanist yesterday. So postcards, uh, if you become a mega urbanist by Tuesday, 
you will receive a postcard from the UK. You could become a mega urbanist anytime you want in, in March. It might be a different place because I'm going back to New York, so it might be in New York once I go back. Uh, but if you want to receive a UK one, it has to be by, Mar uh, by this Tuesday. So thank you everyone, uh, urbanists who sponsor that. There should be a 30 second rule to walk by music. Yeah, I wish they would change the system. It would be very beneficial if they change the system a little bit. The church appears to be closed, unfortunately. Uh, Emily just became a mega. Yes, Emily was the, the mega urbanist. Everyone, round of hearts to Emily for becoming a mega urbanist. Can't wait to send you a UK postcard along with all the other There's also a secret support level called Hyper Urbanist, but you have to contact Ariel to join it. <laughs> says B. Griffin. Maybe one day I'll, I'll include a Hyper Urbanist if I can think of something really compelling to offer. But uh, if you become a Super Urbanist, pressing that Join button on YouTube, pressing that Become a Supporter button on Facebook, or going to patreon.com slash urbanist, you end up getting bonus content. There's going to be a full 40 minute extensive tour of one of the coolest house museums you'll ever see. It's called Dennis Sever's House in London. I will be also posting a short video that's about three minutes in length. But if you want to get the full 40 minutes in-depth tour of that, you can be, uh, see it as a super urbanist. And there's also access to all the entire back catalog. And of course you can cancel any time that you would like. Uh, it's okay, no hard feelings. I understand if people want to contribute only for a month or two. Uh, Roy says, will there be an ultra urbanist? Whenever I can think of something really compelling to offer for ultra or hyper level, stay tuned. Nothing yet. Mega urbanist is the highest I can offer. Let's continue walking around. I'm glad you Little Tuts has been a minute. You're still trekking. Indeed, I am. Esfield says, uh, when you become a hyper urbanist, the postcards will be delivered. It will be. You know, you know pigeons actually can deliver ma mail. They used to be used to be delivering mail. Susu says, can't wait to add that card to my postcard collection. Yeah. Spring has sprung, ladies and gentlemen, here in sunny Manchester. The quintessential English city known for its sunshine and rainbows and blooming flowers. Mel says, how do you prepare for a day of streaming? <laughs> uh, uh, the only preparation might be research. It depends on the location. I sometimes do very in-depth research. And sometimes 
Uh, however, generally, I'm always learning new topics. Since live stream is very conversational, I always have just a periphery of topics to talk about. And so that's part of the day is researching, learning, absorbing information. Other part of the day is of any given city depends on the broadcast of course sometimes broadcast I want to show you something specific sometimes I want to show you something that I'm experiencing for the first time with me and Judith says so happy you're walking here my pleasure Judith And B. Griffin says, this is beginning to look like Yale. Yeah, it's a beautiful quad. I'm not sure if in the UK they refer to the green area in the middle of a university as a quad. Do let me know. Judith says, test the bench. Oh. Judith, you, you, you want to make this broadcast serious. Judah has just demanded the broadcast to be taken into very serious territory. To test the bench. Which best, which bench shall we test? Would it be this one? This weird one that's kind of for laying down and for sitting? Maybe the plain one over here. down there, metal and wood. A nice combination. Which bench shall we test? Or the curvy one. We have four benches that we can test here. Oh, actually, there's also a classic wooden one. Five benches we can test. Uh, test the bench lying down. <laughs> I would not. It's a bit mossy. Some of them are a bit mossy. Oh, luckily, luckily this one's not too mossy. Okay, let's let's test the curvy bench because test the curvy. Bench. Odd shaped. The ones with the curved back. Yeah, I'm gonna try uh, these ones, but I wanna try this one over here in the middle. Let's try this bench. Janet says, I love my London Eye postcard. I'm so glad you do. Thank you so much. Judith says, there is one dedicated to a scientist. Ooh, I wonder which one it is. But here it is, a huge, massive, gigantic bench. Well, this bench has space for a backpack. That's step one. I got backpack space. Gets points for that. Meter says it's no longer a quad, it's a quint. <laughs> Meter making a nice play on words. It's quad means four, quint means five. All right, so ooh, sitting down, using this as a regular bench is no good because you kind of slide off. But if you do, which is not so politically correct anymore in the U.S., a certain style of si sitting down, I'll use the, the politically correct version, cross-legged. If you sit cross-legged, that's rather comfy. I like it. I like it spacious. It's nice for cross-leggedness. It'll be great for laying down as well, using the backpack as a pillow after a long day of studying. Maybe it could be used for yoga. Let's, tr let's try a yoga pose over here. Let's see. Let's see, we're gonna try a yoga pose. We're gonna try, uh, we're gonna try uh, bending this back. Mm. 
No, I'm going to go to sleep. I hope you don't mind. I'll be back in 10 minutes. That's so good. Oh, wow. Oh. oh, that feels so good. This. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, I just got, I got really, I got really tested. Merely for research. Oh. Oh. For research purposes, I got I got sleep for like twenty minutes. I like that I can see the clouds. Bent. Oh. I like the, the I have my back bent. Ooh. Oh. That felt good. I, I I don't know. That felt amazing. Ooh. Okay, so um that was very comfy. Great, great, great back bend. Uh, this is a nice, uh, nice bench for laying down and, and curving your back. Sometimes you need to do that. That's what yoga is good for. You can't do this on a bed. You can't do this on most benches. I like that it's a beautiful sunny Manchester vibes. There's no bird poo around here, which is nice. No bird poo. It's good. The quad is nice and pleasant. I feel safe. I can leave my bag here. I don't feel like anyone would kind of grab and go. Doesn't feel like that type of vibe, luckily. Of course, always be street smart. Don't leave things unattended. Um, and I love the. I love that you can also sit cross-legged and it's comfortable. There's enough space, but also because there's a nice little slope here, cross-legged feels more comfortable than a f completely flat surface. This is nice. This is a good bench. Ooh. Hmm. I'm gonna give this bench a. An 8.4 out of 10. It's a very good bench. I'm gonna miss you, Bench. Good times we had. Sometimes a back needs to be be, be bent. Wow. Alder says it's probably designed so water doesn't pull on it. Maybe. Maybe. Susie says you found your bed for the night. <laughs> Going to abandon my lodging and go directly to this bench. Janice says I'm going to make English news. American tourists test benches. Judith says, Judith, what are you referring to? Scroll back, but I don't see anything. Hey, CB Earth, nice to see you here. 
the memoir bench. To uh, Alan. This one. Radcliffe, you see, love sitting here. Senses and cancer research. Oh, wow. Radcliffe, let me know if he's still. That's beautiful. So this bench basically saying that uh, Mark Radcliffe apparently seemed to have suffered from cancer. Research of this great university, he's he's still alive or has lived longer because of the cancer research. So wow. So Mark Radcliffe. I'm glad he enjoyed sitting here. He still broadcasts on BBC Six Music every weekend, says Mick. Oh, that's awesome. So Matt Radcliffe, Mark Radcliffe is still with us. He survived cancer due to the advances in cancer research. Round of hearts to the researchers here for helping people like Mark Radcliffe, broadcaster. Let's continue walking through. Judith says healing is possible, indeed it is. Susie says, what a nice area. It really is. It's gorgeous. This is the University to Manchester. University of Manchester. Listen, I'm going to put the volume all the way up. Just listen. Tell me what you don't hear.
Yes, it's very silent, very peaceful. Compare most of my European walks outside of London. I mean, Athens was a bit noisy. Rome is a bit noisy, but outside of uh, outside of those three cities, listen to any other broadcast, and it's so silent compared to New York or compared to those other major cities I just mentioned. It is so interesting. Or just so quiet. You don't hear Yes, we're still in the city, but it's still kind of an escape from the immense hustle and bustle of a New York or a Rome or a, a Athens as well, very noisy places. Susu says they're all at the pubs watching football. Maybe they are. The buildings surrounding you were originally for Owens College, one of the predecessors of the University of Manchester, with originally being located in the center. But as it expanded its research and teaching and became more specialized, new buildings and facilities were required. Funds were raised to purchase this site, and the buildings around the quadrangle were completed between 1873 and 1902. In 1880, Owens College became the first member of the Victoria University, England's first civic university. Later, the university incorporated colleges in Liverpool and in Leeds. When this federal this structure was college was reconstituted as the Victoria University of Manchester. The buildings of the old quadrangle were designed by the Victorian architect Alfred, an example of Waterhouse's Gothic style, and provided large teaching rooms, specialized research facilities, and spaces for social activities. The first was the Joe John Owens Building in 1873, to our left. Amazing. Cool thing about England as well, they're very proud of their history. And you'll find, well, this is very nice. They're also very good at wayfinding. You always find maps all around UK. That's why it's easy to get around. But you also have a lot of history over here. Wendy's in Waterloo. Oh, cool, Wendy. You're in the speed boat. Wow. Well, that's awesome. The building in front of you is named after John Owens, a Man Manchester merchant and industrialist. When he died a bachelor in 1846, he left a fortune of 96,000 pounds in order to establish a college to provide a traditional university education for all. Most English universities at the time restricted access to students based on their faith. But John Owens insisted that the college should admit students of all religions. The trustees of this estate made a vision a reality. In 1851, Owens College open house on Key Street in the city center. Oh, yeah. Wow.
here you can hear a pin drop. I literally have a pin in which I can drop straight out. I think it's still in my wallet. So I got a pin. This is to open up SIM cards. But let's wait until a uh, uh, guy passes. Can we check for echoes? Yeah. All right. Let's wait until uh, this gentleman passes. I've always wanted to taste test uh, the sound of a pin drop. Now I lost it. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Let me know if you heard it. Bear with me, I gotta drink some water and then we'll continue on our way.
and the Manchester Museum is closed. Unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, people of all genders, our cafe is also closed. PJ says, because of uh, COVID? No, I don't think so. Well, maybe, maybe, might be the reason, but a lot of things have been opening up again. England feels basically normal. I haven't had to show my V card, not even once. Um, I barely have to have put my mask very few times. It feels free once again and Drew says I'm near the bus stop indeed I am yeah we are right over here I'm 44 Mir says, how will you describe the atmosphere in Manchester? I'm loving it. Uh, this area is a bit sleepy because it's a Sunday in the university area. Curry, curry. We end up walking through that pretty quickly. So Manchester is not as big and high energy as a New York or London. However, it's still a very nice, vibrant city. Especially the more towards the city center. A lot of things to do. A lot of people to see. A lot of businesses to enter. A lot of shopping to do. A lot of food to eat. A wonderful city. In terms of its architecture, it's beautiful because it's a lot of industrial architecture. Hard to show you everything because I'm doing... Oh, hey, how's it going? You're in the neighborhood? Yeah, yeah. I am. You are? Okay, cool. Work. I oh. Yes, indeed I am, yeah. Welcome back. Oh, thank you so much. And the weather's kinder to you as well. What? The weather's kind. Oh, yeah, yeah, the weather is very beautiful. Compared to the other day, it was cold and raining. And... Everyone, this is Annette, a local Mank here hello. in Manchester, a uh, viewer for a very long time. Oh, thank you so uh, much yeah. for saying hello. Thank you very much. Yeah. I hope. first time lucky, or when, yeah. you go, when, when you get back in New York? Stay tuned, uh, it's a surprise, yeah. but. Uh, you may, you may never leave. <laughs> well, what do you recommend in this area? What do you really love in this area? Um, well, obviously it's university land. Yeah. So MMU, which is Manchester Metropolitan University. Okay. Um, the most is Manchester University, which is ah. the Manchester Museum as well, just oh. down the road. Just oh, that's wonderful. Next to where you were, the St. John's building. It is a beautiful, beautiful area, yeah. something yeah. for you. I can't find it. Oh, yeah. sure, yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad that you've come back because I forgot to give you this. Ah, here it is. Oh, do you they have to? I belong to a crochet dissing club. Oh, you do? And oh. It's, um, Manchester, heart for Manchester. Oh, I love that. Heart for Manchester. Oh, with the B, with the Manchester, Manchester B. B. Yes, so the workers B. This is the workers B. The, this is the emblem of Manchester. Yeah. Oh, that's so beautiful. Thank you so much. Isn't it every yeah. year. So, the last yeah. crochet order is March. May 22nd, which is the anniversary of the Manchester bombing. Oh, I see. So it goes out along St Anne's Square, St Anne's Church. And so they crochet a lot of things all yeah, around yeah, here? Yeah, they just swing across the trees and across oh. railings. And oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Oh, thank you so oh, much again. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's a pig baby, but it's okay. <laughs> I, lo I love, I love uh, crochet. I love knitwear as well, so this is very that's nice. Good. Yeah. Oh, much for tuning in. Back. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, sure thing, yeah. Aww. Go for it. Oh, this is Manchester yeah. Heartland. Hello. The, the, the heart. Oh, Manchester Heart. Let's so take one, two, three. Oh my god, this way. Okay. That's wonderful. Thank you so and then, have a great day. Bye-bye. Yes, have a safe yeah. journey. Okay, anyway, thank you so much. Yeah, enjoy Manchester. Thank you, beautiful okay. city. The second time. Are you staying here or are you going somewhere else? 
again, it's a surprise. Wow. But After Sheffield, you would have ended up going to Birmingham today. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going down south. Stay tuned, stay tuned. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, okay. I appreciate nice it. Have appreciate a good day. Bye-bye. 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 <laughs> so round of hearts for Annette for, with a nice little heart. I love it. So people who don't know, uh, round of hearts for Annette. Uh, local Mank. Thank you so much for the worker bee. This is the emblem. The, not the heart, but the bee is the emblem of Manchester. I haven't pointed it out, but maybe if we bump into bollards, which are the street guards that are all around the sidewalks, they have the bee symbol. And apparently it's the worker bee because, uh, of course, Manchester used to have a very strong industrial past. This was a very working class city. And thank you so much for the beautiful crochet. I love it. I love crochet. It's very nice. Busy bee, yeah. Let me put it. Let me place this heart close to my heart. Here in my, my heart pocket. <laughs> a bee equals a mank. Oh, cool. That's awesome. Uh, bee griffin. Ah, uh, the bee. I've seen about it. Yeah, it's very nice. Catherine says, were you surprised to see her? Indeed I was, I did not expect that. We, we bumped into uh, Annette before. Thank you so much. Again, I'm always happy to say hi for a few seconds. Always happy. But then I have to continue on with the show. Past the Yifeng bubble tea shop right here. And right next to it is a co-op, which is another of the Grocery stores, they're very low cost grocery stores. Um, I do recommend going there, there also if you're trying to, if you're visiting here on the budget. Ms. Lop says, uh, what was she saying about the event? Um, so apparently, so, uh, I think, though I'm not 100% sure, Chester. And they do something along with crocheting in the street to, uh, to, to commemorate or to in remembrance the people who lost their lives or were injured. One of those things. So if anyone knows more information, do let us know. Sally, we're in the city of Manchester. Peter says, co-op is not cheap. Really? You would say co-op is... More or less expensive than Sainsbury's. Let us know. Yeah. Sainsbury's. Sharon says it's called yarn bombing. Oh, I wonder if that's where the term came from. Wendy says, are you getting a coffee? Ooh, that, um, that Indian food went down heavy, so no coffee for me. And also, it was not that much food, but it just went down very heavy. The worker bee is a symbol of the Manchester since 20 p 22 p Becky. How long is left? Oh, I don't know. Stay tuned. Not sure. I don't uh, have usually a uh, set time. There'll be a, a ending point that'll feel right. Irene, stay tuned. Surprise. Sally, as I mentioned, I'm in Manchester in the university area. I 
Yeah, I think the bee is on the garbage cans. Are they here? Oh no, they don't have the bee on the garbage cans. They have it all around the city, so I'll see the bee somewhere else. Goncha, oh Goncha is here. Bubble tea place. Gary says you need to switch out Indian food as it can feel, feel spicy on the way out. <laughs> touche, Gary, touche. Ivo says time for a coffee break. As I mentioned, uh, I ate Indian food before this. It unfortunately, went down very heavy um, despite it being little food. It wasn't even that spicy, but it went down very heavy. I'm not sure why. Uh, so I just, it was water for me for the rest of the day, I think. Becky says, keep your eyes open, there are bees everywhere. Yes. Here's like a music venue, the footage. Wow. Looks like what used to be an old movie palace. Look at the Grosvenor Picture Palace. Yep, an old movie palace right over here. That has been converted into some type of venue. Alder says, was it fried? Yes, it was fried. Becky says, you need indigestion tablets now. Oh, I, already, I already ate them. <laughs> you didn't hear a thing, but I did it all behind the scenes. Turn left, there's the arts department, says Judith. Ooh, arts department, let's start it up. Kay says you need some peppermint tea. Indeed I do. Pro tip everyone, um, peppermint tea is very easily found in Cafe Nero's and Costa Coffees everywhere. They tend to be everywhere. I'm not sure if uh, Starbucks carries them here. Here's Grovesner Square. The feeling is very Brooklyn. Yeah, it looks very Brooklyn indeed. Yeah, we went to the quieter area of town, especially on a uh, Sunday. University is probably more lively on a weekday. But at least here we got the highway. Look at that. We got a highway, ladies and gentlemen. Sometimes the highway is all you need. <laughs> Susie says, this is the BQE, the Brooklyn Queens Expressway. Kind of looks like it, yeah. Uh, kind of looks like the Gowanus Expressway as well because it runs through the middle of the city. Probably has a different name, let us know. I, usually the highways start with like an A, I think. He says, if you like crochet, I can have, I can go at knitting you a vest. <laughs> oh, cool. Susie, that's so kind of you. This is the A57, says uh, class. Class, you got some class. Thank you so much for letting us know. The A57, ooh. It looks like a food hall. Is it one that they see? Oh, this is like a restaurant food hall. What popular music called Hatch.
Judas says, try d dense and rich cakes at Hatch. Oof, I can't. But kind of looks cool, though. There seems to be a lot of popular music playing in there. Let me see if I can cross. It's not that much traffic. Okay. Oh, this was an espresso bar. All right, I'm gonna mute. Bear with me. I'm gonna mute. Okay, everyone, I gotta take a commercial break. I'll be back. You're gonna see some pre-made video. Enjoy a nice little trip. Be back.
Well, that was an adventure <laughs> through Hatch, which is under, built underneath the A57 highway. And uh, these are the photos I end up taking. It was a very tight space, so I couldn't, I couldn't really pose. And for some reason, the camera was set so low. But there we go, those are the photos. <laughs> there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Now I can say, how many did we fit in there? About 300 people. We fit through about 300 people inside this photo booth. It was cozy, very cozy. You know, I'm being a very tall 5'2", it's already cozy enough. So uh, I'm glad it got even cozier with 300 plus people here. It's evidence. Camera wasn't meant for people who are 5'2". No, no. I'm a bit too, I'm a bit too much of a tall 5'2". So, what else shall we see on this adventure? Do you want to see the city center? Photo numero dos es mi, uh, mi favorito. Um, Nomad says the second one is my favorite. Que bien, si, si, tiene mucha personalidad. It has a lot of personality. Susie says, can't find that underneath the BQE. Which shocks me. So Susie makes a great point. Susie from Bushwick says, um, can't find that underneath the BQE. We underutilize our spaces below highways. Very few places in New York actually put like a center like that underneath the highway or a rail overpass, which is a big shame because it should have uh, a lot more utilized. We should take advantage of those places. That's why I was blown away by London as well. They really utilize the space under all the rail passes and a whole lot of highways. So here we have the dance house. Did this used to be a nightclub? Or still is, maybe. Jan says, we're still behind Europe. Indeed we are. Indeed we are. So Wendy says, we would love to go clubbing. Yes. We'll do an episode where we club. Get um, hammered with all the other manx sharon says a nice sunset is coming oh yes the beautiful manchesterian sunset mancunian sunset dirk says have you been to birmingham no i've not don't know much about it i heard today a friend of mine who's a local told me that they filmed Peaky Blinders. Oh, it, Peaky Blinder takes place there, which is interesting. Do locals say cheerio, ta-ta? This is that one about and ta-ta is kind of a very posh way of sounding. So it isn't very common. Posh means high class, upper class. So no, you hear that more when like in the very rich parts of London. So here we're starting to see the canals of Manchester. Is Manchester set up in the grid system, as Janice? It has a system, it had, definitely has some type of grid. Uh, it's not like New York, but definitely has grids. And here is the canal system. 
Dirk says, please do a Peaky Blinders tour. I will. Uh, that's interesting, yeah. There are a few, a few cool documentaries of Peaky Blinders. I got to put this in my bag um, so I won't lose it. Uh, yeah, I got to do a few of Peaky Blinders uh, locations. They're here in Manchester. Not, actually, not in Brunium. Ron says a water taxi. Unfortunately, the canals are not used, really. So the, the reason the canals were built was because Manchester, as we mentioned many times, as very evidence with uh, our Liverpudian urbanists that tune in, Liverpool and Manchester have a rivalry against each other. So Liverpool has all the ports and the docks and the access to the sea. Manchester kind of, but it wasn't really useful for many centuries until they decided to build their own canals so they can go around Liverpool. So they wouldn't need to be depend on those darn Liverpudlians. Uh, hence the Mank and Liverpool rivalry continues. See, you can't even find a barbershop underneath a <laughs> uh, rail overpass. <laughs> It'd be Griffin, please, though. No. no false advertisement. There's no hyper urbanist. So now we're close to the Oxford Road stop. So here's the main rail line, railway that passes through Manchester. And we can see how Manchester is growing significantly. And we found Ground Central, Ground Central, right over here. It's always been here. It apparently has more canals than Venice. Oh, so that's interesting. Lots of interesting places to visit in the UK. It'll be impossible to see everything. In one trip, at least. There's vloggers out there still. Showboss says, what is this city? City of Manchester. Not Liverpool. Drew says, are we going in? No, usually hotels are not too kind to just filming inside, but because there's uh, the check-in. I'll show you from over here. Says, where is the Mer... Uh, Mersey River. Not here. That's in Liverpool. Is it? I, I'm not sure if the Mersey, I don't think, does it extend into Manchester? I don't know. Pardon my ignorance with uh, geography of this area. Do let me know. Does the River Mersey extend? Am I going to visit the oldest parts of the Romans? There's not really that much Roman ruins. There's only one little Roman block that survives in Manchester, as far as I know. I'm not sure if there are others. I'm under the impression that there's only that one little block, which is located in an area called Castlefield. Dirk says the big question, are you buying a United or City football shirt? <laughs> Dirk, that is a very dangerous question. No comment. No comment, Dirk. I'm not taking sides. I love them both equally. Go City United. Go United City. And that says just night. uh... Just arrived home. Nice to see you again. Hope you uh, take the heart back with you. Thank you so much, Annette. I appreciate it. Um, hope, hope you got home safely. Do they have a little Italy? Not here. I saw way more Italian shops in Glasgow in Scotland than I see Italian places here. 
So yeah, Beauty and the Beast is playing tonight here at the Palace Theater. One of their bigger theaters here for, for um, performances. Do let me know. Do you guys want to go in? See some uh, musical? Catherine says, no comment, Ariel has been told. <laughs> to not start a riot. Yeah, yeah. We won't have a repeat of the riots of no ananas in, um, in good old Milan. Ibel says he remembers the the great Ananas riots of 2021. Ooh, a craft beer place and Indian street food. Though I like Indian street food, I don't know. Can't have any more. Janice, also, yeah, Nanas, I'm referring to pineapple. I'm referring to a video where I bumped into a, pro a massive protest happening in Milan, not related to anything I did, of course, um, but I was joking around that it was a massive protest against pineapple on pizza. So check out that Milan broadcast. I think it was the last one I did or the second to last one I did in Milan. Here's Pizza Express. This is like the... California Pizza Kitchen of UK. We got Tesco's. Every time I see Tesco's, I feel like rhyming it, like uh, Petco. Petco has a, in the US is a pet store. And the slogan is Petco, where the pets go. But I'm not sure how to make Tesco's work. Tesco's, where the tests go? We have uh, either flight tests or patrols of uh, fighter jets. <laughs> so here we have the picture house. Is Tesco a British Walmart? No, it's, a, it's a, a, for food, for groceries. Walmart is more everything. I'm not sure if there is a British Walmart. Do let us know. Is there a, a store where you buy food and also clothes and also apply, uh, like um, home goods? And maybe some electronics. Sharon says it's Asta. Okay, okay, it's uh, Asta. Okay, thank you. Jamie and Mark also says Asta. Okay, thank you so much. Ben says it's a Weatherspoons. Weatherspoons is a uh, is a chain restaurant, so it's like a or a chain pub. It's not really equivalent in the U.S. Yeah, there's no equivalent of Weatherspoons in the U.S. Whoa. Buses here pass so close to the street. Marks and Spencer's is the cheapest, says Judy. Oh yeah, Marks and Spencer's is another one. Okay, here's a defibrillator. Oh, how do you pronounce that? Defibrillator. Defibrillator. So who needs one? So Weatherspoons is very unique because Weatherspoons allow 
each of the locations to have kind of their own style, but they do have pretty much a same menu all around. So for example, this is a pub or gigantic, like, yeah, this is a gigantic pub that's called the Paramount, but it's actually owned by Weatherspoons. Weatherspoon. By mistake, I say it plural. B. Griffith says it's pronounced, don't let something fib you later, yeah. Julia says there's a good Italian restaurant to your left. Ah, thank you, Don Giovanni, you're referring to? Oh, I can go for some Italian. Okay, who wants to learn something crazy? A secret. I'm not sure if Manx, Mancunians know about it. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. Maybe they should. For this requires us to venture into the backsides of Manchester, where few men venture. This might be dangerous. This might require some wiggling around through the backsides of Manchester. But if we get there, you'll be in for a treat. Well, at least the story. Let me know if you want to learn about the secret bunker of Manchester. <laughs> and I'm joking around. It's actually like right next to me, but <laughs> let me know if you want to see it. Bella says, love a good secret. Okay, I'm glad you do. I can't show you the location because it might be a national security uh, breach. This place was on uh, D notice, which is a specific kind of law here in Britain, in the United Kingdom, where media is not allowed to publish about this because it's a breach of national security. We don't have this in the US because we have freedom of press and there's no, there's no way that the government can actually enforce anything. We have things that are classified, but here they have the D notice. This D notice was lifted back in 1968, but why did they have a D notice right here through this door this is a top secret bunker in the middle of Manchester I'm, I'm this is real history ladies and gentlemen I'm not joking around this is not this is not sarcasm uh, I'm not making this one up um, this is a real history this is a secret bunker or not so secret anymore, but this, it was a secret bunker in the middle of the city of Manchester. Built in 1954 for four million pounds. 100 feet below, right now, is a system of tunnels that extend a mile and a half, maybe even more, but at least a mile and a half was what was publicly announced. And for nearly two decades or one decade it remained a secret until 1968 when that deed notice was lifted and people found out about it i build a system of tunnels underneath manchester well the 1950s was a time where great britain was afraid of nuclear war the only nuclear power was the u.s and the soviets they were developing their nuclear weapons by that time so anything could have happened. People were afraid of the U.S. too. Don't think that the Brits were comfortable with the U.S. because suddenly the U.S. had immense nuclear power that they can use at their will. 
What if we elected the wrong president? What if we let a general have too much power? That was a fear, not just with the Soviets, but with the Americans everywhere around the world. For example, one of our generals during the Korean War, the top one, had plans to nuke every major city in China in order to destroy it in one fell swoop and clamp down on the communist regime. He got this close to doing that. This would have not led to nuclear war because the Soviets by that time still haven't developed their own nuclear weaponry. So the British were spooked and they built this as a nuclear bunker that is heavily sealed. The building, the official purpose, is a telephone line and it runs underneath all those telephone lines. However, in 2004, there was a massive fire that broke loose and this fire destroyed or uh, took down 130,000 plus telephones around Manchester. So it's still vulnerable to this day. Now, I'm not sure if it still is in use as a nuclear bunker, but it's still heavily protected. They don't want anyone coming down there. It extends underneath Manchester Chinatown as well. Now, there's one sign over here which makes it seem very deadly. Danger of death. Keep out. We'll save it for another day. I don't feel like getting deported, so <laughs> I will refrain from pressing the doorbell. <laughs> I quite like this country, so we'll save it for another vlogger who doesn't care. <laughs> if you know a vlogger, if you know a fellow vlogger out there who really doesn't care about the UK, doesn't mind being deported, tell him to press that button. B. Griffin says, buzzing bunker 55, buzzing bunker 55, yeah. Sue so says, knock on the door and run away. There's cameras everywhere, actually. So it's still, it's still somewhat surveilled. Here we have one of the ghosts in Manchester. Robert says, the door, the door sell, uh, sets off a chain reaction. Oh yeah. All right, I have one more stop for all of you here in Manchester, beautiful city, highly recommend it. Let me show you some more beautiful buildings right this direction. Hey, Liam says, Liam from Dublin, welcome Liam. Liam, excuse me. Says, I've been four times to Manchester for my greatest love, classical music. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm glad you're enjoying this tour. Thank you so much for tuning in, Liam. So here's the tram system. This on the weekday would be a lot more full because this is like an office area. Doesn't this feel like downtown Manhattan? Yeah, parts of Manchester and also parts of Liverpool feel like the Wall Street area. Hey, New York City Walking Show, nice to see you here. Did I go to the Shambles yet for a pint? Says Becky, no. Is it a good pub? Or is that an area for pubs? 
Rami says I need plans to visit Bristol. Stay tuned. There will be videos of places and we'll do things and learn about more things. Maybe eat some food. Maybe drink some coffee. Maybe ride a train. Maybe be on the tram. Maybe walk up the countryside. Who knows? Stay tuned. Wendy says, let's go to a show. Isabel, thank you so much for the stars. I appreciate you. Look at this fancy hotel. This is the Midlands Hotel. AR, leave me a super chat. Thank you so much. I'm not sure if this is the first super chat, but thank you so much, AR, for the super chat. Uh, $10 super chat. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you're doing well. AR is also a mega urbanist. Thank you so much for your support. And I, I hope you enjoy the, the postcards. Cool hotel in here. Informed Rolls Royce. Hmm, cool. Here's the free bus around the city. Number two. It's a free bus. And you can take it around the city. I'm a very, I'm a, I'm a quite, I have a words of way, sometimes. <laughs> Susie says, is that your accommodation? Oh yes, so I'm staying at that hotel. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the penthouse suite right up there. Penthouse suite. It's very nice. Room service every night. I only live the high life. But Susie, don't tell anyone. Shh. More uh, buildings over here. Look, buildings. Oh, how I love buildings. Catherine says, it's so you. <laughs> yes, only the finest for me. Let me know, who else loves buildings? I love buildings. I love to look at them. I love to touch them. I love to be just right next to them. In beautiful solitude. I love buildings. No matter says me too. I'm glad. No matter said uh maybe Griffin. Zito says, buildings rock. Indeed they do. England is really stunning. Oh, yes it is. It's super stunning. Yeah, there's music here. Sorry, I got a... Uh... There's one uh, thing I can show you, but I'm running out of batter battery. So let me know if you want me to hook up my battery because it won't last for about 10 more minutes. Uh, let me know if you want me to hook up my battery for a nice extra 10 minutes here at an area called Dean's Gate. Vote now or forever hold your peace. So. forth and vote.
Wendy's voting for an extra two hours. <laughs> There's some, some some limits, Wendy. Some some limits here. Helen says, can you take us for dinner? I cannot possibly eat more. I, I, that, that Indian food went down way too heavy. I, I'm not sure why. Susie says, I got a, sp a few spare AA batteries. Thank you so much, Susie. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't think my phone and my gimbal accept AA's. Wendy says, take us for sparkling water. Oh, yeah, some good, good sparkling water. <laughs> Wendy, yeah, yeah, I do love a good sparkling water, actually. So I love the look of just this entire place. You can see that the architecture really grew up a lot in the late 1800s, early 1900s. The main trades were... Uh, cotton, garments. This was at some point, Manchester was called Cottonopolis because of all the cotton that they brought in from the southern states of America to process and make into garments. And Dave, Dave says a lot of Peaky Blinders filmed here. Yes, it, indeed it is, yeah. Let's go towards Dean's Gate. Let's see. Let me see a Dean's Gate. He says great architecture yeah so this used to be a massive railway storage facility dean's gate i assume connected to the freight rail system right down here so we have a lot of big industrial architecture this building is gigantic it, it's a massive block wow Catherine says, did, did I, have I ever streamed from an old West Town? No, I haven't done, I haven't done like uh, the Western US yet. It'll be cool. I know there's some towns that have that vibe. Let's see if they do offer anything. 
Things are so empty here. Why is everything so empty? Hey, can any um, Mancunians let me know where do people hang out on the Sundays? Things are like almost uh, this entire stream, everything looked pretty empty. Just for the few, like 10 minutes we were at Curry Mile. But it's like no one here. Wow, this is so empty. Holy shit, nothing here. Probably a church or a home since uh, Teresa. You know, uh, UK is not that religious. Oh, class, so is, it, is, is football really that big of a deal that there will be, like, a lot of people there at the pub? Is it really that big of a deal? Because in New York, you know, Subway Series, you know, you'll still see people out in New York. Ben says yes, it's a big deal. Okay. Thank you, Ben, for letting us know. Wendy's, uh, we're rooting for Man U for Manchester United. <laughs> nice. Oh, there we go. That's Manchester. We had peace and tranquility because of the football match. <laughs> Sharon says they'll be mad just for later. <laughs> Soon, right? I mean, I mean, I think the match is, ends at like around 6.30, 7. says note to self visit Manchester when there's a big gig going on yeah if you like if you like your chill um cities then yeah seems like the best time so ooh, modern Pol polish cuisine that's nice very beautiful where's the stadium says helen i think it's a, like a tram ride away i think it's more in the outskirts of the city Sharon says the police and am ambulance services are not going to look forward to tonight. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Eibel says there will be carnage later tonight. Oh my god. Now let's end over here at this beautiful building. The Sunlight House. Wow, this is a gorgeous... What is this, like Art Deco? It has the long lines of Art Deco. But on top, it has a mansard roof. Yeah, it's like New York Art Deco. Oh, that's so fascinating. It's called the Sunlight House. About 25 miles away. Wow. That's far away for a soccer or for a football stadium. Oh my. Um, because in New York City, Football stadiums 
not football, but um, or baseball stadiums. About 15 miles away from the city center, from Manhattan, from Times Square. It's not that far. 25 seems like far. If we were to make a comparison with, um, actually it'll be less, it'll be like maybe, yeah, a little bit, about 15 miles. If you were to make a comparison, 25 miles from Times Square would be the middle of Nasa County. It'll be where Nasa Coliseum is. Wow. That's quite... This is a cool building. Eibel says no way it's 25 miles, more like 25 minutes, I think. So, what colors should I wear tonight? Let me know. The colors that you recommend me to wear in order to uh, blend in to the carnage that is about to ensue due to all of the soccer hooligans, football hooligans, I mean. Uh, CB says wear blue for city. I'm already wearing blue. I got even a blue hat and everything. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm literally in all blue. I even have blue socks. Uh, so everyone, Wendy says you be careful. Yeah, I'm wearing all blue. <laughs> but it's not like a jersey. I'm not wearing like a uh, jersey or anything. So everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm ending right by this beautiful Art Deco building. Well, it appears to be Art Deco in beautiful Manchester. Manchester is a wonderful city. Highly recommend visiting it. Stay tuned Wednesday through Sunday at 3 p.m. Uh, there will be one last weekend here in the UK. So you'll be seeing other parts. Who knows where? Every day will be a surprise. I'm Ariel. Oh, Chris does one correction. So I'm someone either I misread or, or someone says something incorrect. That's okay. Uh, the stadium is only about 3.5 miles away. Thank you so much. About 25 minutes. Okay. Thank you so much. Close by tram. Everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, if you want to lend your support, patreon.com slash urbanist or press that join button on YouTube or that become a supporter button on Facebook. And Super Urbanist, if you become a Super Urbanist on Mega Urbanist, by Tuesday you'll be getting a postcard from here, from the UK. Stay tuned, everyone. Keep being awesome and always keep on its warrant. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye. Cheerio. Ta-ta. Good chucks.